Hello, my VOD people. This is a special greeting just for you. Now let's have a look at my Twitter account just to make sure the stream is happening. Oh, I'm actually not logged in. Not sure if this happens automatically or if I have to do anything. Yeah. I have to tweet something manually. Uh, Twitch.tv. Actually, my audio should be a bit louder. I I notice now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, let me just tweet here real quickly. Okay, let's see. I actually should probably just keep Twitch open in a separate thing here. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Just going to double check my audio here. Uh, it's a bit low, I think. Uh, am I able to boost it through... Do, 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 do. Let's see. Maybe this. Uh, well, that helps. Okay, that's probably fine. Okay, let's see. If we, I mean, these cookie warnings are everywhere. I. Do not like them, but they are a evil that Twitch has decided that they want to have there. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to take these off. Okay. Uh, let's get started. 
Uh, as far as I can see, we don't have any people in the chat, which is fine. I don't expect anyone to be actually interested in this. It's just a fun exercise for myself. So that's fine. Um, let's see where I'm at. Actually, can I pop this chat out into its own window? Uh. Flubber chat, there we go. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, now I'm a happy camper. Now I'll maybe be I'll maybe be able to actually keep pace with what's happening. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. So the first thing is, should we maybe have a look at the text, which isn't rendering as Markdown, or should I just? Put that off for later. Meh, might as well fix it now, I think. Okay, so we need some kind of mar markdown to HTML converter of some sort. And I'm not going to write that myself. We should maybe just look up one on the interwebs. Uh, let's just search for markdown and see what we're... A uh, sensible markdown parser for JavaScript, eight years ago. Built for speed, that's exactly what we want. Modern pluggable markdown parser. Okay, we'll just have a look at one of these and see what it says. A lot of dependents, a lot of downloads. Okay, it's... 310 kilobytes. It's maybe not my, uh, let's see, a pluggable one. Let's just say it's a bit larger, doesn't have as many downloads, half as much supposed to come to mark spec. Safe by default, URL auto linking. Ooh, okay, that syntax extensions and sugar. That might be nice, but I don't think it's actually necessary for what we want. What's this say? Build for speed, low level compatible parsing markdown without caching or blocking for long periods of time. Lightweight while implementing all markdown features from supported flavors. And specification, works in a browser, on a server, or from a CLI. I think we just might go with this one, actually. Does not sanitize the output HTML. Please use a sanitize library like DOM Purify, sanitize HTML, or insane on the output HTML. Okay, so it needs an extra step, strictly speaking. Hmm. That's not too fun. It might, it might not really be a problem for our case, since we are only going to output like stuff that no, we're only out gonna output text that we produce ourselves. It's only for like my, my text, what I'm writing on the page. So it might not matter that much because I mean, Parts done right, fast and easy to extend, blah, 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 safe by default. So, okay, that has suddenly become a feature that we're looking at. Doesn't care much about security in many cases. You have to pass output to sanitizers. It, okay, don't enable HTML, extend markup feature with plugins. It's okay for, uh -huh. enable HTML and use external Okay, so you need to use it with the with a plugin. Okay. 
Okay, these are sensible, but still, we're not going to output anything that's from an untrusted source. We know that everything should be fine because we produce it ourselves. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, with plugins. Oh, so we need to... Oh, man. Why has Markdown become so difficult? <laughs> um, you know what? Maybe we should just go over this and just ignore the safety thing for now. I think we're actually going to do that. Don't tell anyone. Okay, so it's called marked, right? Let's bring up returnable. I'm actually gonna bring it up like this for you guys to see. Uh, yeah. So the trick now is to remember to remove it every time I bring it up. But I do have it in my side vision, so I think it should be fine. Uh, let's see, let's split it this way and go here. Yarn add. Does that dev service report us adding anything? We'll find out. Marked. I'm not certain that it's gonna. We'll see what happens. Okay. Let's uh, hide that one and go back here. Okay, so this T function, this is what does the magic. So if we head into the translator file. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ooh, it's been a little while since I worked on this last day, I feel. Uh, let's see. Right. So if we are doo -doo -doo -doo, instead of here, Outputting an error, right? Okay, so here we're sprintfing if we're templating any values in. And if we're not doing that, we're just returning the value as is. Right. Uh, right. So there's two cases where we are, where we need to do the markdown thing. Uh, do, 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 do. <clears throat> yeah, we're just going to put this in a separate function, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. We do flatten, blah, 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 blah. Then we export this. Okay, so we're just going to do it here. Uh, compile, translate, compile, markdown. It's going to take a text of some kind, which, oh, here we go. Switching between languages uh, for my daytime job and what I do at night, that's quite a mind shift. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we really need these? I didn't actually look up how to use this. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Browser included like this. Okay. Yes, but how do I actually use it? Yeah, okay. Uh, the uh, terminal freaked out. So we need to fix that. Fix that. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, right. We, <laughs> we have a syntax error. That makes sense. Haha. <laughs> I thought it was the uh, addition of the new package that did it. Looks like it didn't it actually handle that quite well. Hmm. Let is see. Okay, you just import marked. Uh, okay, so we'll just have to import the whole thing. Oof. Okay, not what I wanted, but sure. That's what we do. Uh, let's do import. Uh, can I just do like this? Mark maybe from marked 
And then we'll go down here and we'll just say marked with the text. I think that's sufficient. Then we'll just compile to markdown. Uh, value. And here we're going to do this whole thing. So compile to markdown. Okay, let's save that. So look over here. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? Oh, yes, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is HTML. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. So now we're in the right ballpark. Now we just need it to be right because it outputs peas. Hmm. That's not really what we want, though. <laughs> we just want plain text in some cases, not paragraphs. How do we differentiate between those, though? I'm like 99% sure certain there are like libraries that handle this, which I could use, but I'm not. You know what? I'm actually going to ignore this extra paragraphs for now, though I don't really like it. Oh, man, they're inside of here, too. Uh, I'm going to have to make a difference between this, I think. So there's going to be like a difference between just plain text. Why does it make everything paragraphs though? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, hold up. And we're back. Let's see. There we go. Hello. Um, <laughs> I scare myself by uh, noticing the uh, video of myself popping back up in the stream on Twitch. Good work. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're going to ignore the P's for now. Uh, we're just going to accept that they are, I don't know, a necessary evil maybe. Meh. It's fine. But the next problem is when we're actually outputting this. So if we head back over here, we're just outputting this raw, but we can have to do like this to make it work properly, I think. Uh, this is not going to show up here. Uh, this is do -do 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 index, maybe. Yeah. Let's see, do, 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 header body. This should be probably be a good testing ground. Right. Okay, so that, that, look, blah, blah, blah. that looks good. But this is not, we're not going to be, want to do this all over the place. That's just too much hassle. <sighs> so we're probably going to put this in a text component right away. No need to actually. delay this anymore, I think. Don't see a reason why we should delay. No. Because we're not, we're not going to output all this all over the place. That's for certain. And if we want to output the raw thing, we're probably going to do this. Maybe there should be like a setting that you could, or a parameter you could pass that decides if it should render a, a markdown or not. Hmm, that doesn't make any sense either. Well, we're going to go get back to it, right? So let's just make the text component, I think. Um, if 
for that, we're going to go into lib components. This is where I'm doing this. Well, let's do a text component. Yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, we're going to do a script. Oop. Let's make it a lang type script thing. Now we're going to have an export uh, let. key type string which is required what we're going to output is just the uh, so but we're going to need to import the this one Oop. And then we're just going to output the key for now I think that is sufficient at some point, we're going to need to support the params parameter, right? Which we do, 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 do. support like, yeah, oh, that's not it at all, this one. So in the, in the thing, uh, let's see, uh, right here. So you, you pass in the key, then you pass in values, and these values will be substituted into the, into the string. So if you have like percent s, it will substitute in the first um, occurrence, um, or the first element in the values array into the first occurrence of percent s, for, for example. So we're not gonna support that at the moment because I don't think I use it anywhere. So we're gonna skip that for now. We're just going to support putting in keys like so no styling or whatever. We're just gonna support this. I'm also exposing this as a store, um, just so if you change language while running the app, you're actually you, you you'll get the updated um, the updated uh, values. Um, why support this at this point? I don't know. It was just fun to, <laughs> to implement when I did it. <laughs> no reason. It's just for fun. Um, you don't need that reason to have fun. As long as you're not hurting anyone else. I should qualify. Okay, let's see. Let's start using this thing. Uh, so we'll change this uh, to use the new... Uh, hmm. I think we're going to do that with this. Text key... And we're going to delete those and close it off. And then we're going to have to import text. Yeah, so the, it does this wrong because SvelteKit has these very handy um, shortcuts for things like this. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's see. Do, 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 do. This almost, if we just remove, like, well, this doesn't work. Uh, what am I doing here? This should be one of these. Yeah. And this should be like this. There we go. Okay, that's going to be right. Uh, so we'll just do, whoop. You didn't see that, but I did. Text key equals delete those, delete these, delete that one, and close it off. Same goes for this. Let's um, text key. And this one. You see, here's the problem with we've got this h1 and then we're outputting a paragraph inside of it which is uh, it's not optimal but we're not going to worry too much about it at the moment um i'll probably get the back to that at some point uh forgot to delete some stuff is that all yeah Well, that was interesting. So now we're getting a lot of extra padding everywhere. Ah, this is exactly what I didn't want.
Yeah. Let's think about this for a little while. Um, so the Markdown compiler are outputting paragraphs for single line text, which is probably correct, but it's not what we want. Might there be like a setting which tells it to not do that? Because that would be stellar. So if there are no new lines in the text, don't output paragraphs, basically. Yes. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, sensibility options. Here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Something about paragraphs, maybe? Para paragraphs? No. P tags? Inline markdown by running mark parse inline. Oh, that's exactly what we want. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Parse inline specifically. <laughs> wow, that was a lucky break. Uh, let's see. Where did we put it? There we go. <laughs> uh, thankfully, we put it in a separate thing. Marked parse inline. Let's have a look at that. Yay, that's exactly what we want. Excellent. Okay, that was thankfully easier than I have thought it might be. We might want some kind of option that may, lets you decide whether you want the parse inline version or not, but we're not gonna cover that now. That's too much work for now. Uh, let's uh, let's move all of these other things uh, to use. Okay, right. So here we've got a placeholder, which uses that one directly. Is that a problem? Nah, probably not. No, that's not a problem. I think we'll probably see. Okay, so this is one. That's right for. Um, Updating. Are these streams going to be exciting? Nah, maybe not. But, um, they're mostly for me, not for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, I think that's, this should be left in. Ah, here we go. This should not. You know, these don't really oop, need these. Um, where's the other one here? No, these are static, so we don't need these. And uh, that actually goes for like index two. Uh, let's see here. We go like this one. Doesn't really need to be interpolated. That's just this extra work. This one too. No need to be interpolated. Uh, this iterates through, through some stuff, that, so that makes sense. Uh, let's just, just do this. Um, then we are going to do the scramble screen. Uh, yeah. So text. If I actually just hit enter here, we'll get some auto completion action going. Uh, there we go. Do this. Uh, 
is that all? No. Here we go. Uh, text. Ugh. Text key. Oh crap. Sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, one too much. One too many. Yeah, this is not used yet. So I'm a preparatory code, I guess. Not sure if that's a word, but there we go. Uh, let's have a look. See, well, it looks fine. Dungeon are in there. Do we actually just put that in, or does it default to this? If we just try to start an encounter with any text in here, no. <laughs> You know what? I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna default it to this, <laughs> uh, just for fun. Um, let's see. Well, f first, let's just commit this, and you're not gonna be able to see that because I do that outside of everything else. Uh, let's have a look. Where is the thing I'm looking for? Uh, here. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We're just gonna call this add support for markdown. Also adds support um, also adds text component for easy insertion of uh, text, I guess. That was a bit redundant, but there we go. So, um, if we actually head over to strings now. So this is just, these are the strings that are present in the application as of now. And while they are now, for, for now they're just in like in a TypeScript file, I'm guessing that these are gonna be translated into some kind of JSON at some point or something else. I don't know. Uh, this is just like a temporary thing. It The main point is that they're put in a separate file so that it's uh, fairly easy to add support for like a proper translation thing later maybe if we want to support multiple languages or whatever. Uh, anyway, it's better than leaving these directly in line in the code. Anyways. <clears throat> Uh, so let's see. Do, 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 do. Here we go. DM placeholder name. So we already have a variable for this. So maybe we should just use, reuse that. Yeah, we're just gonna reuse that. That's gonna be in sync anyway. So uh, DM name. Yeah. Um, we we don't actually do anything with it for the at the moment, but let's say if. Instead of doing this, we're just gonna say DM name. Uh, do TypeScript support like uh, this syntax now? Maybe, but that's not what we want. We actually want this syntax. Let's see if we get any hiccups. And if that's not present, then we are actually gonna poke into the translations, which are fine. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. We're gonna do T. We're going to go setup dot dm name placeholder like so. Let's see if the compiler chokes on anything. Mm, doesn't complain. We don't actually store this anywhere, so it doesn't really make sense what we. Okay, so this is as far as we've gotten. Um, just gonna commit this. I I am in favor of smaller commits. We can always squash them or something later if we want to. Uh, use the use placeholder dm name. If no dm name is specified. The placeholder suggestion is used instead. 
instead. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so what we're actually building here, <laughs> uh, to bring you back to what we're actually doing. So what we're building is a an app to use the Aces High rules from Arcadia 2, I think, or Arcadia 1. Uh, I don't actually remember now. Let's, um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. The third uh, edition of Arc Arcadia, which is a D&D um, magazine published by MCDM. Um, most known, perhaps, for their Strongholds and Followers and Kingdoms and Warfare Kickstarters. If you're a patron, or you can, you can, you get Arcadia once a month for free. And if you still want it, but you're not a patron, you're able to buy single issues from their store. Sorry about this. Just gonna, oh, get me a drink. This is some kind of ASMR experience again, I'm guessing. And if... Uh, and in their third, day, uh, third uh, monthly issue, they... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going <laughs> to... Bye. So, in their third issue... I should just say issue here instead of edition. Actually, just goes to show how good my English is, really is. Let's see here. There we go. <clears throat> can I do this? Oh, I can do this. Nice. Um, so in the third issue, they have these rules for like dogfight combat in D and D fifth edition. Which it looks pretty cool, actually, and they've play tested it too, and had uh, some fair success with their testers. So it looks really interesting. But the rules are probably not that commonly used by the DMs and players. And I thought, well, let's just make like a digital tool to help you play or run an encounter using these rules, which will remember some of the fiddly details for you and automate stuff. And yeah, so you you need to buy the issue to actually get the rules. I'm not going to publish those. I'm not, that, that's, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so we're not going to do that, but we're going to automate the rules for, for the players and the DM. So my hope is at some point in the future, when I get near to finish with this, um, you're going to be able to, the DM is going to be able to go here, click Start Encounter, select the name from them for themselves, and maybe some other settings. I don't know. For a setup, then I'm going to start the encounter, and the first part of the rules dictate that everyone should scramble, so everybody rolls on uh, as many times as they can um, a single d20, and stop when they have a a desired number so I might stop at 16 but if I roll once more and I get a 15 then that's my current number so that's what I get I'm getting I can't keep the highest one so what whatever is your current roll when time runs out that's your roll I'm not, uh, I'm not certain about this random uh, algorithm that I'm using here so we might have to tweak that later uh, let's just commit this Fix typo. <laughs> the best of commit messages. Fix typo. I might actually just squash this. Um, not, not squash, but fix up. Uh, use fix up. Mm, eh, we're probably going to get back to it. Okay. So, next point of order is the roll thing. I did actually have some notes on this, th this I think. Let me just... Bring up some private notes here. Uh, 
Okay. So for the first phase, roll 1d20 for 5 seconds. The, the rules are just 10, but if you're using like a digital tool or a VTT, this is just maybe just rolling for 5 seconds instead since you're able to roll a lot quicker. So that's what we're doing. I'm I don't think I have any limit on how quickly you can click the button now uh, right now, but that doesn't really matter because you kind of want you you want time to analyze what your role actually is before clicking again. So you kind of want to decide like yeah, 16, that's good enough. I'll 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 stay on a 16. Uh so you you're not really incentivized to kind of try to click as fast as you can. You have to pick a number and and, and stay. And the next thing I have on my list is lock the current result when time runs out. So this little roll thing, uh, is it implemented directly in Scramble? Yeah, it is. Is that intentional? Yes, it is. It's supposed to be a separate screen. <clears throat> hmm, but we have this scramble state right here. So pre-scramble, during scramble, and then post-scramble. So the thought here is that you kind of initiate the scramble phase as a DM when all the players are ready, and then you scramble for five seconds, and then you're in post-scramble, and you move on to the next phase, which is the um, more or less the start of the combat. You start with an opening altitude, which is how high... Um, over the ground you start, and which is uh, which is decided by the um, by the d twenty. Um, on how high you roll. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see. The thought here is that the DM initiates the game, goes through, through the setup screen, and comes to this scramble screen. And when they're on this scramble screen, they will wait for the other players to connect through uh, like WebRTC, I, I'm, I'm thinking. So everything is peer to peer. And you wait for the other players to connect, and then you start to scramble uh, once everyone is connected. And, um, and that's how you do it. Okay. So in this first phase, we're not going to actually enable anyone else to connect. We're just going to make everything ready from like a DM side. And then I think we're going to build the player set afterwards, maybe. Because the DM has to see everything that the players see and more. So I'm thinking if we build the DM side, we will probably be able to just like split up the code a bit and reuse uh, reuse the parts that are common to both sides of the the screen, so to speak. <clears throat> so let's see, state management. It's always fun. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So we start to scramble, uh, we start rolling. We're not gonna worry too much about design at the moment. That's not like the, the main issue. We're just gonna... Generate dice roll, right? And this will roll 1d20, that's what that means. Do we ever start to scramble? Yes. So we go back and start encounter. No. <laughs> oh right, it's probably clipped. Ah oh, right, that's that's the thing that's. Hmm. We should probably just add that to the layout. I'm guessing. Do we do that over here because we don't have. 
the layout thing for the index, do we? Uh, let's see. Oop, ah, that's not what we want. This is what we want to do. No, so we don't have the, the header over here. Not for this. And then we get one over here. Yeah. So for this layout file, which is, dictates the layout for all routes within the uh, the directory, we should add like a top margin. Oh, we already do. Do we need more space maybe? Let's have a look. So if we're in scramble thing, okay. Why do we immediately go into scramble? Or do we? Because we sh oh, right, it, it says the same thing. Well, that's confusing. <laughs> that's confusing. Okay, let's change that translation or that string at least. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, because you're using the same string. That's really confusing. Uh, so let's see, play, scramble, uh, start scrambling, I guess, I guess. I would just call this, uh, Start scrambling. Sounds kind of corny when they say it like that, but sure. That's, that's good enough for now. And then we're going to change this to actually be... Start scrambling. Like so. Whoa! That was interesting. Where did my styles go? We do not know. Getting any errors? None the... Maybe in the console. Received an unexpected slot default. Okay. That's a svelte error. Why though? Why are we get? Oh, whoops. Uh, why are we getting that? That's strange. We didn't change anything really apart from the string. Do we need to reload for the string? Oh, we probably need, we need to reload for the string. That's annoying. Uh, are we able to reload the whole thing? No, oh, we'll just have to restart. Okay, restart the compiler. Oh, that did not help. That's annoying. Right, I've fixed this before. What did I do last time? Uh, an expected slot default. Why did it occur when it changed this text? Well, oh, oops, that is not what we want to do. Plus, we don't actually need these around here. Same goes for this. Let's just keep it simple. Um, Let's click the button, uh, thing and see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, oh, what was the... What was the thing that triggered this? I can't remember. Well, that works. It's just the... Looks like the styles are all out of whack. <laughs> uh, come on, what's the... Well, that's the reason again. Come on, John. You can remember this. You've done this before. What's the reason that they do this? Uh... Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, let's, let me just have like a look here in my Pride browser. Um, self default. Uh, 
Uh, let's see this one, I think. I know I've looked and they should look for this before. Let's see, yeah. You need white space between named slots, but we're not using named slots though. Um, this is a long discussion. Another discussion. This seems to be still open. Right. These are they are only present in in dev, so it shouldn't really be a problem in the long run. But just really weird that we're suddenly not loading the CSS, which is very strange. Are we getting some kind of errors? No, not really. Oh yeah, here we go. A lot of four fours. Oh, right. If I actually look at the compiler, we might actually get some, um, some answers. No, it's just that it's, it's the same output twi once again, so they're ignoring it. Yeah, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> uh, duh, 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 duh. Oh, might that actually be the problem, though? That the output is the same. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, let's just try to change something else and we'll see if that changes anything. Uh, let's hide this and uh, close this and we'll just try to change something else. Um, maybe like start the timer, countdown timer. I've written this like a, as a variable, but I'm not really sure why. Uh, I know what this is. Oh, right. I know why. I know why. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Count. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Countdown timer equals set time out. Set interval. Set interval. And for the interval, we're just going to go uh, current countdown minus. No, we're actually going to have a block here. So current countdown minus equals one if current whoop, current countdown is zero uh, countdown timer no uh, the uh, what's the what's the function uh, un, not unset uh, but mm -mm. Mm, delete, delete, no, remove, uh, <laughs> disable, ah, come on, ah, I'm not going to remember this, am I, uh, let's just search for it, uh, md, mdn, uh, setting interval, we'll just search for that, um, what is the, what is the counterpart? Just set interval. Set them out. Do, 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 do. Ah, clearing timeouts. 
clear timeout and you just pass it the thing yeah so here we want to do clear interval that's the one count 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 down timer yeah uh, then uh, we're going to display doo -doo 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 -doo. some kind of countdown, I'm guessing. So we'll just do that in, like, in a separate thing here. Uh, maybe we should do this. Uh, I don't know. H3. Uh, current countdown. Like so. No, that didn't help. And that starts at zero. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, that didn't work very well at all. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Start scramble. We set the interval. Oh, maybe we should actually set the interval to something a bit more. Here we go. Bloop. Bloop. Once it reaches zero, we should also do, we clear the interval, we set the uh, state to be scramble, oops, scramble state post scramble, and we add a check. Uh, actually, we should just move this to a separate function at this point. Um, let's rather do it down here. Uh, roll die, I guess. Come on, there we go. And if state is not scramble, state scramble, uh, return. And down here, we are going to change this to be roll die. Like so. So when this ticks down, yes, that is logical. <laughs> I, I like how I surprised myself by having code that does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is nice. Uh, if state is Uh, scramble state dot post scramble. Just have have uh, like a an H two, which shows the current role. So now it should stop, and it shows one because that's the front of the world. Okay, that's good. Um, still annoyed about the th things not working. This is updating. This is complaining about the slot still. But we're still getting the 404s, which is so strange. Where did these go, I wonder? Did they move? These are supposed to be in static, yeah. Balloon and picnic. They are here, along with some fonts. Very good. These are supposed to be copied to this folder, I think. Runtime? Yeah, it doesn't find those. It tries to find them at play, though. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Wait a second. Let me think about it. I know what. Let's have a look at the index, the app HTML, perhaps. Yeah, 
this doesn't work if <laughs> right that doesn't work very well if if you're not at the right uh, right so if we head back to like the the root of course oh that's not what we wanted at all let's see all right, I could try, let's try that again there we go like this all of a sudden it starts working again we head through all these and wow look at this it's working these are relative that doesn't work if you're refreshing some kind of a page way down the navigation tree uh, so that doesn't work uh, let's see why do we navigate one level up then get them uh, I guess that's where This confuses me. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I oh sorry, uh, if I am at this is located here, but that shouldn't really matter regarding where they are. Are they just at the root? Maybe could we just oh okay, that seemed to work. Let's try navigating to this for real. Let's have a look at the network traffic just to be sure. So we're going to counter, we start the encounter, we refresh instead of here. We say that these are loaded as they should be. Yeah. Not really sure why I did that. Hmm. Anyway, fixes our problem. So that means I'm going to head over to my Git client and just commit that change. Uh, let's see. Yep. Remove. Um, what's the word? Relative paths for CSS files. Use absolute paths instead. There we go. Very good, very good. Let's see, scramble spell, yep. Okay, so the scrambling part is now, does it look, kind of looks off a bit. Why does it look a bit off? That's annoying. Oh, that is also a bit annoying. We'll get back to that though. Okay, so we're doing this. Oh, a 19, that's good. And it stores a 19, yeah. So all those things are working as we expect them to. So once everyone's gotten their results, the thing is though, the DM have multiple monsters to, to scramble for. Do they all use the same altitude? That doesn't sound really fun. How do you solve that? I don't think the rules specify. Let me just have a look, quick look in the rules. Uh, this one. You're not going to be able to see this, but I'm looking at the rules. Oh, this is issue four. That's the wrong one. Uh, that's not what we want. This is the third uh, issue. I'm certain. Yes. Ace is high. Let's see. Scramble. All piles must scramble. Yep. Roll d20. Uh, all combatants. It doesn't actually specify how the DM should do this. Maybe we just re-roll it, pre-roll it maybe? That kind of makes sense for the for the DM to just pre-roll, like roll once for all every everything. Or maybe like a best out of three maybe? Hmm. 
a, a, a double advantage. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't say. It just says everyone's scrambling. Hmm. Well, it kind of assumes that the DM only have one... one uh, uh, creature or character to play during the uh, the scrambling phase which might be true hmm we'll just leave it like this for now but we're probably gonna have to get come back to like how should we solve DM's rolling Okay, so let's see. Uh, I should actually just keep. No, 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 no I got it here. So, <clears throat> should probably keep some kind of uh, file just with a kind of like rules. So, we're going to add a TypeScript file. We're going to call that just call it rules. And let's export const. Um, hmm. Opening. Oop, opening altitude map. Yes. Explicitly, this will be a record, which is a TypeScript thing, of, not any, but of number to number. So if it's one, it's going to be two. That's going to be oop, the case for... Everything up until four. Then it's going to be three for a little while. Up until eight. For nine, it's going to increase to four. Uh, for 13, it's going to increase to five. And when at 17, it's going to increase to 6. It's going to go on for t until 20. So that translates quite nicely to something we can look up. So when you get a when you get a current roll of whatever, you get a opening altitude or something else. So let's do that. So we're gonna do, 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 do curve JPA opening altitude map for current roll. Uh, yeah, let's do that manually. Actually, the plugin in WebStorm has a tendency to freak out. Opening altitude. Yep. And we're not gonna do this whole thing. We're just gonna do this instead. So if we now try, start scrambling, we roll something proper. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, okay. So we got got a nine. That gives us a starting altitude of four. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Maybe have a. Maybe we should just have a string. Okay, let's just minimize this. Um, let's add a string for uh, current um, oh, roll, which we just call current, and uh, open oh, opening out 
he chewed to be open. Oh. Uh, let's have one that just cause just call time left. Keep uh, play scramble time left. Uh, should maybe just have a look at BR here. Uh, let's do that for this one too. Let's just be current roll and this and this, but this is supposed to be opening altitude, like so. Oh no, we shouldn't click away the 18. Oh, there we go. That was lucky. Yay. Okay, that's a bit more explanatory. So now we know what, what the numbers mean. So once we've reached this stage, We know the opening altitude, which means we're probably going to move into the Right, I, I see that that we have. I have some content on like what you can do when it's. Oh, sorry, uh, when it's your turn. A lot of this I can't use and actually putting on the the site because this is content that's there, so that's not possible to put there. I can put the rules in, but I can't put like the content in. So, like, what, what kind of gut moves can you do? Um, Uh, yeah, I'll just have to kind of like walk it, walk a line here, <laughs> just and be careful just to implement the rules and not actually any of the content from the text. Um, and I should basically be fine. Uh, let's see. Huh, interesting. I'm just looking at the users in chat. I'm guessing there are like four users, but it only says three watching in, I don't know. I don't know what any of this means. <clears throat> so the next phase is moving on to like the battle phase. So now we're done setting up the battle, now we're actually in the thick of it. We've all got an opening altitude, which tells us how uh, high up we are. There are six levels, or rather, like five active levels from two to six. If you're at level one, you're basically scurrying the ground, so you're probably just, you're, you're on your way to crashing if you're on like altitude one. And you can go up to altitude 12, but everything above like level, uh, from seven, up until or up and including 12 are like high altitude which gives you some bonuses and some drawbacks and i'm not really certain how much of that i'm uh, i'm gonna mention i'm just gonna probably show like yeah you're in high altitude now remember this rule and you'll have to look it up to see what it actually is more than more than it actually being, um, no, more than actually just saying what it is, is happening. Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna need a but button to move on. So let's add that just real quick. Uh, we got a button component apparently. Uh, this should probably be a link button actually. I'm looking, link button. Uh, href, and it's gonna head over to, how, how do I put this in the setup screen? I'm guessing that I, okay, I use go to here. Yes, because I need this, yeah, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need this to be play. All uh, right, I need this to be like this. Uh, play and uh, like encounter encounter ID of some kind. Uh, then. Just like that, I guess. Yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, let's see. How do I get the encounter ID? I actually don't. Do I do? I get it here though, right? Yeah, because I import page and get the page params. Okay, I can do that. Uh, just import that at the top. Let's get these. Uh, we're just gonna put those eh, right about here. Uh, unterminated template. Ooh, that can't be good. Right, that makes sense. Here we go. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> a lot of stuff missing. Uh, let's see, we need one of these. Then that should be fine. There we go. Yay. There's something out, off with the, the margins or the paddings over here, but uh, on the button, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to <laughs> ignore it for now. It's not liking the app shortcut. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, it's a Svelte kit thing. Uh, there are probably some updates uh, actually for the Svelte plugin. Let's just have a look while you can see. Uh, no, actually. Hmm. But I Vim, Rainbow Brackets, and Tom all have updates. So I'm just, just going to install those in the background. There we go. I cramped my foot. Uh, we're not going to restart right now. Thank you very much. So at the end of the scrambling thing now, oh, uh, is that working? Ooh, that's bad. Whoa. That was interesting. Uh, Let's try that again. Oh, not like that though. Let's try that again, like this. Yep. Sure, we're just gonna be in there. Okay, here we go. Ooh, a 19. Well, we're gonna stay on 19, that's for sure. Right, okay, that looks good. Uh, we're gonna need some text for that though. So we're just gonna do this. Text, key. Um, play dot scramble dot start combat, I guess. Uh, strings, we're gonna open this start combat. One of these start combat. Well, I'm not gonna bet on something higher than that. Oh, maybe we should actually show the opening altitude. That's kind of relevant because it's relevant to know that when you roll a 17, you're kind of at the top already. Yeah, I'm actually gonna just add that right away. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, maybe those displays should be actually be the same. What? Uh, 
Anyway, we're gonna add this at least. Uh, these five lines should go in here. This should maybe be like a an H2. That kind of just ruins this thing. She's the second most important thing. Okay, we're gonna change this to an H2. And this to an H3. Okay. Right. Start scrambling. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. We don't have a current role yet. Hmm. What do we put when we don't have a current role? Like a one? Sure. Uh, uh, yeah. What are you gonna do on this? No, 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 no. <laughs> hmm. It's not undefined for, uh, no, for one, it's supposed to be two. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right, we need to fix both places, though. Oh, or the right place, rather. Because at this point, we actually have one of these. So we need it over here. That's where we need it. Okay, let's start again. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, let's see. And now nothing works. Should we just default current roll to be one, maybe, instead of zero? Does that make more sense? I think it does, because you can't roll a zero. Which would solve this problem, too. Yeah. So that solves everything, actually, instead of doing this work around here. Let's do this instead. Yeah, there we go. Start. And... Oh. Oh, that's a... That actually solves itself in the lick of time. And we do this 404. Yeah, this works. Okay. So we're just going to commit this. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. Add post scramble stage. Add post scramble. Stage. Adds um, rules.ts for containing rules, I guess. Um, yeah, let's keep it at that. Let's see what's next. We want the index file here. Let's do a cell component, call it index. Nope, index. Oh, so we don't need anything more than that. And when we do index, we actually want to display all the combatants and where they are according to like, their opening altitude. Yeah. So this is the point I'm thinking that we need to start to introduce global state. Because now we actually need to keep track of stuff. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's add some global state. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple for now. Um, and keep everything as flat in this directory structure as possible. Just because if we need to restructure it later... That's gonna be less cluttery, I guess, than overstructuring now and have a lot of directories with just uh, like one or two files in them all over the place, which might not help very much. Uh, we're just gonna call this state, I guess. And hmm, how should we solve this? Uh, in Svelte, there are like built-in stores which are reactive, which will when you update them. They will automatically push their updates everywhere. You could use a lot of small stores for different values, or you could use like a big store with just a huge object, which you always update and and change. Hmm, what to do? What to do? 
I'm kind of in favor of just one big object, but I'm kind of discussing with myself whether it's the right thing to do or not. What's easier to reverse if we decide the other way? To split a large object or to gather a small a lot of small objects? I think it's easier to split it than to gather it together afterwards, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. Okay. We're gonna export an interface here. Uh, we're gonna call it app state. Uh, it is going to contain a players array. Uh, how do you define arrays again? And okay, play player. Uh, we're not going to need that. Uh, we're going to also export that interface. Player. They're going to have a name, which is a string. And they are, they'll have an altitude. Altitude, which is a number. Actually, just to be kind of nitpicky here, we're actually going to define this as a type called altitude. And that's going to be two or three or four or five or six, <laughs> or seven, or eight, or nine, or 10, or 11, or 12, like so, which is more accurate, because it is actually an altitude, like so. And we're gonna have an array of those. And the app state is gonna be stored in a writable thing, which we can wrap if we want to. Do we want to? I think we want to. Because then we can just do like add player and do the right thing, I think. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. So export default. <clears throat> I very often favor export default and I think I'm gonna continue doing that for some reason, yeah. Uh, we are going to keep, we're going to gonna have like a const state, which is going to be an app state, like so. And players is going to be an empty array like so. And this default thing is going to export like uh, add player. And you just input name and opening altitude like so, and which is, an, oh, no, it's not a number. It's an altitude actually. And do we do like this? And you say, doo, 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 doo. yep, it's an, um, or is maybe this the right way to do it when the, <laughs> I'm thinking, do I, yeah, I think I do, actually. Yeah, so, hmm. State is going to be not an app state per se. It's actually going to be a writable. And the initial value is going to be this right the initial state and we can actually specify that this should be of app state just to make sure that it's known 
and then we do app state uh, we do state dot set we can set an we can do update and we can say cur cur dot players dot push uh, name and altitude right uh, can we not all oh, right we actually need to say opening altitude over here oh that's not what we want opening altitude there we go Uh, I need to return this updated one, I guess. Yeah. Sure, we're going to do this for now. We could just do this like... Hmm. This is more efficient. Okay, we're gonna leave it for this like this for now. Uh, let's add another, which is subscribe, and that's just gonna be state dot subscribe. Actually, we're just gonna let that straight through because that handles everything for us. Right. Okay, I think this is good. So let's go back to. Well, we need to go back to scramble. No, no, no. I mean, setup, because this is where we set the the name for the player called the DM. So we need to pass that to scramble. Now, my instinct is to just say pass it as a query parameter, maybe. Nah, it feels kind of hacky. When the other players join, how do we do this? No, they need to go through like a simplified setup in themselves. Don't they? Yeah. <coughs> Maybe if we set like a... I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards setting like a, a value in their local store. Or local storage just to... Like set their preferred name right there, and they make make my keep it across sessions, and we can also like generate like a unique ID for them, so if they have to reconnect, they can kind of reconnect to the same player that they were automatically. That might be actually kind of nice. Yeah, that might be kind of nice actually. But we're gonna. We're gonna wrap this in a. In a separate thing, I think. You know, I'm actually going to change this to say app state, uh, like so. Forgot const. And we're going to add, like, maybe you should uh, in, It's going to be. Hmm. Like user. 
preferred preferred name. Player name? Display name. Naming things. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Uh, player name. Yeah, that's that's it. That's what it's gonna be now. And we are going to say set player set player uh, set just like this. And it's gonna take a value, which is the name. It's a string. And when you do, uh, let's do hmm, apps. Uh, let's actually do a refactoring for this. So uh, this one, app state. Oh, writable. That's actually a good name. Uh, but impl? No, that's not impl. Impl. Um, yeah, that's going to signify that it's, that it's a pride thing. So we're going to change this to be below here, actually. And this is going to also have a back and field, which is a player name. Uh, which is a write up. And that is going to be like local storage dot get item. And that's going to be player name, I guess. And if that is not set, Default is like an empty string. And when you set it, we just do player name dot set it to name. And we're going to write it to local storage with the key player name and the name, like so. And you can, of course, subscribe, subscribe, like so. And that's just going to expose player name subscribe. What is you complete? Ah, oh, right. I need one of these. Here we go. So that's the player name. I think we're actually just going to, on the back of this great success of making this one, we're just going to make another one immediately and call it player uh, player ID. It's a bit weird that the client generates its it generates it itself, but I I don't think that's a problem necessarily. This isn't supposed to be cryptographically secure or anything, so I don't think it's a problem really. Uh, so this is not going to be player name. This is going to be player ID. And this is going to be player ID. And this is going to be player ID. Uh, this actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually not necessarily necessary at all. Um, because we are just going to go to local storage, get item, player ID. Why do this? This doesn't need... No, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Um, let's just call this, uh, 
Let's call this player ID, right? So we'll do this. And if player ID, if not player ID, if there isn't one, uh, we will generate one. So we'll say player ID equals generate ID. And we're gonna save that to local storage, that item. Player ID. put in player ID, and then we're going to export a const called player ID, which is player ID. There we go. These are technically, uh, especially these um, when talking to local storage, these are going to give us a performance hit when like starting the application. I don't think that's a problem, and if it and if it becomes a problem, if we figure out that this is spending, we're spending too much time speaking with local storage during boot time, we're probably just gonna uh, wait for it a bit, like add some kind of init, init function that you have to call before you start using all this stuff. Um, which can then be done after initial load or something. Uh, we'll just have to look into that at that time. I don't think it's um, issue at the moment. So now moving back to the setup. Uh, once we got a DM name, we are going to use app state and we're gonna add a player. No, we're not gonna add a player. We are going to use uh, player name, and we're going to set that to DM name, like so. We need to import player name and import statement, like so. And we're going to change this to lib, like so. And we are do, 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 do. We're just going to do this, I think, and just paste that in here and remove that like so. Yeah. So that means when we're in the scramble phase and we're at this point where we, yeah, so we need to go away, uh, move away from the link button again. That was a short thing. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep this, this thing, uh, ooh, that was not my intention. Let's see, const start combat, I guess. Don't think we need any inputs. Uh, and we're going to use go to, we have to look that up. Um, which was it? This one. Uh, where is go to? Where does actually go to come from? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I hadn't scrolled up all the way. All right. So it's in here. Along with this. So we're going to do this, but we're also going to add the player. So this is where we use app state. We uh, app state, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, add import statement. And we are going to add a player with the name of player name. We import that and get the current value. Oh, that's not how I get That's how you get the current value. And the opening altitude map with the current role, like so. Yeah. That looks about right. Uh, let's see, you can remove this and we can simplify this path uh, to just like a dollar sign and the same goes for this. Uh, yep.
Yeah, this is actually not uh, a number. This is actually supposed to be an altitude now. Nice. Um, so that makes sense. Uh, this one, however, uh, this is going to complain. Am I misremembering? Can I just do this? I think so. Pretty sure I'm supposed to be able to do this. We might just have to say that this is indeed a string. To full uh, TypeScript. Click at set or fix the code to dismiss. Uh, error. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is um, this is fine. So this should be uh, on click instead, and we're gonna use start combat as the thing that fix something, but not everything. We have the blank screen again. I'm gonna have to end this soon. Okay, let's see. Uh, button on click. Yep. Uh, have we button in? Ported somewhere. Yep, we do have a button. Uh, we have an on click. We have some text. That's fine. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's see at the error messages. Console. Uh, now it's encounter ID. That's fine. It might be in this. Let's see. Starting counter. Yes. 500. Import not found. Go to. Okay, that's a lot more helpful. Okay, so didn't like this one. Uh, where did we. Was it set up? Yeah, I think so. Oh, app navigation. That's not what we. Oh, that's. Um, that's a boo boo. Uh, let's see. Import go to from. App navigation. There we go. Local storage is not all oh, right. Yeah, this is the thing. So since well, SvelteKit works both on server and on the client, you actually have to check that you're in the client before you can use any of the local uh, or any of the client side APIs like local storage. So before we do this, we actually need to check if we are indeed in the browser. Um, I'm not really sure what's the best way to do this. Because we, we only want to run this exclusively in the browser. There might be a way to actually specify this in the uh, in the tooling directly docs. Uh, let's see. Do they call it the browser? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Load only applies. It's important to note that load may may run either server or the client code inside a load block. Um, yes, yeah, so we can use browser to check if we are in a browser. Um, yeah.
let's see. Um, <laughs> okay, so we we want to skip running this until we hit the browser. Should we just like return early maybe? And just call this service side as service uh, the, the client side state? That might actually just be Yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking maybe we just do this immediately, maybe. Or do we Nah, we're gonna keep the imports first. And then we got some types. Okay, let's do this here. So if uh, not browser, uh, do return. And it's not gonna like that because we're not in a function body. Right, 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 right. Well, this is gonna present a problem. Hmm. This is client side only code. Is there a way to mark it as such? Or should we have like a global handling here that handles all this stuff and only sets up all these things if we're actually in? Hmm. This is very interesting. Um, I think we're going to try this. So if you're not in a browser, no, rather, if you are in the browser, do do all the things. Yeah, because then you can export. That's what I thought. Okay, that's not going to work, right? Because the, the alternative is we, we just have to... Hmm. Maybe we just create like a no-op thing? Yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. So we'll just call it like a const storage, right? I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but we'll see. So if we're in a browser, yeah, if we're in a browser, return local storage. If we're not in a browser, return this other thing, which does nothing. So the this is the thing implemented. Uh, we're gonna remove all these type def. Ooh, that's not what I want. Type definitions because we don't really need them. We just need them to be present for the thing to work. Right. And then we need all references to local storage. Should change to storage instead. There we go. Crypto is not defined. Oh man, these are all over the place. <laughs> um, I am guessing this is in here. Yeah, because we're using crypto like it's uh, nobody's business. All right, so do we do the same thing here? There have to be a better way to do this, I'm guessing. Well, maybe, actually, we can do this, I'm thinking. Uh, so if it's not set, do like uh, get random values. Whoa, hello. <laughs> um... Yeah, we don't need that many, um, that much details actually. We just need to 
pretend there are these details, like so. And this is going to complain because blah, 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 blah. It doesn't fit the other thing. Right. Well, it doesn't really hurt. So, oh, right, because then it doesn't fit there. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so we're not going to be able to, like, just monkey patch it like that. So, let's just call this, I don't know. Um, ah, come on. Let's just call this, like, crypto service, I guess. And let's remove this. Do an equals here and say, use crypto. If not, use this random other thing that I made, const. Um, right. Why am I not getting these problems? Oh, wait, I am getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're probably going to do this and do set. Item. Yeah, we're going to keep the types, I think. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Keeping the types. And then we are changing all these to storage. Um, a function whose declared type is neither void nor any must return a value. Yeah, sure. Uh, return null, I guess. I'm guessing the same goes for this, actually. Uh, I don't know. So, get random values, yeah. Just gonna have to hey do the whole thing then. I must return a value. Ah, return all. There we go. Or loophole. Does that work? Crypto is not defined in utils. Oh, utils. This is where I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we actually need to do this properly. Apparently. So, browser. If it is. If not. Crypto service get random values is not a function or its return value is not iterable. Okay. It is, but okay. You know what? An empty array then. No? Okay. Uh, int eight array. A new one of those. New. Uh, with the size of zero. Come on. That's legal, isn't it? In eight array is not. What do you mean? Different subtype of constraint in eight array. Yeah. Well, um, okay. How is my. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm going to do this then? Okay, that doesn't work either. Yeah, 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 yeah. I meant this one. Hey, why doesn't that work? You know what? We're just going to return what we got. Ha! -ha. Tricked you. There we go. Very happy with that. Okay, let's see if anything works anymore. Uh, sure, we'll stay at a 14. Okay, that seems to work. Yeah, we didn't go through the proper process, but I'm... Uh, I'm optimistic. So this should add uh, 
add a player to the to the thing, but we don't list it anywhere. So that's the last thing we're gonna do for today, and then I'm gonna have to call it quits. I'm guessing. So yeah, uh, let's do a for each, which is called just each. Uh, okay, let's start with a script. That's always a good place to start. Lang, type script. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually get the app state. So we're just gonna import app, ooh, app state from here. Uh, we're gonna change this to a dollar sign. And then we're gonna do an each over here instead. For each app state dot player layers. All right, we're gonna do this also as player. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, we are going to do this. We are going to print like an H2 with the player. Oh, that's not what we're going to do either. Player dot name. And like an H3 with the uh, player dot oh, uh, altitude. Way it actually worked. Nice. Okay then. That's good. So we're probably gonna have to list this. Um, this should probably be listed in the scramble screen too. Actually, when you hit the last thing, uh, let's just copy that over sooner rather than later. Uh, so down here. Instead of showing this, we're actually just going to print this. Um, player name, and then we're just going to uh, do this. And inside of some small tags, we're going to print that and delete those. And over here, we're just going to have like an H1 which is going to have a text with a key that says um, like play.scramble.players. And we're actually going to add that to the strings too. So let's do here, players, players. Uh, so if we go over here to this browser window, there we go. No players yet because we don't add them at this point. So what we need to do is add them as soon as. Instead of doing here, we're gonna do it here. Yes. And so <laughs> we're back to actually using a link button down here. Now I'm gonna keep it like this for now. Maybe change it back later if we decide to do that. So let's see, yep, yeah, that's good. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's good. This is a player start the combat. I hear other players. Yeah. Cool. So that was a global state. Uh, add list of players to uh, play slash. Uh, Encounter ID. Oh, that's actually going to be square brackets rather. Encounter ID. Like so. Adds list of players to. 
slash play and counter ID. Adds global state for adds global state for app. Sure. Yeah, that is it for today. I think it's even past midnight here, so we're gonna have to to call it off for here. Blah, blah, blah. call it off here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so. For those of you who were watching, thanks for watching. And for those who managed to get through this on the VOD, thank you. And uh, I hope to catch you in the next one. Snuggies.